In this video, I'm going to take you through how to use Excel to calculate the descriptive or summary statistics. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at how we can let Excel find all of the summary statistics, which technically isn't all of them, but most of the time using that option is exactly what we need. Then I'm going to take you through how to find specific values. So if your needs are to just find the mean or the median or the mode, which are all measures of center, I'll show you how to do those just specifically. And then I'll take a look at variance and standard deviation, which are measures of dispersion or spread. And then the minimum, maximum, and quartiles. And just for fun, we're gonna throw box plots in there as well, which uses measures of position. The first thing I want to show you is how to find all of the summary statistics or descriptive statistics at one time. So if you're just asked to find the summary statistics, this will be the option that you will choose. After this, I'm going to show you how to find individual values, and that will be if you have a specific need. You only need to find the mean or you only need to find the median. Then you'll use those individual functions. But let's say I need to find the summary statistics for calculus one grades. The first thing I'm going to go, do is go to data and hopefully you see data analysis there. If you don't, you need to enable your data analysis tool pack. So to do that, you will go to file and to options and to add-ins and notice here mine says analysis tool pack. If yours doesn't, I can just go down to where it says manage Excel add-ins and click go. And notice that is where I have chosen the checkbox to enable my analysis tool pack. And that's all I needed to do. So if this wasn't showing for you, once you've checked the box, now it should show for you. Then all I need to do is select column A, go to data analysis, and I want the descriptive statistics. So summary statistics and descriptive statistics are the same thing. I'm choosing descriptive statistics and OK. The input range, notice it did not uh, input A for me, so I'm just going to choose it again. I need to click labels in the first row because as you can see, I have a label, calculus one grades, in the first row. If I didn't, then I wouldn't click that. The same thing we did before for output, you're going to tell Excel where you want the descriptive statistics to go. So maybe I need a new worksheet ply, which means make a new page. Maybe I want it to go to a specific place. And so I'm going to choose that um, output to be at D1. And then I need to tell Excel that I want the summary statistics. I don't need confidence interval levels. We haven't even talked about that yet. I don't need kth largest or kth smallest. All I need is the summary statistics and click OK. Notice what it does is it gives me the mean, the standard error, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, all of those things that we're learning about in this chapter. And again, I could repeat that for my calculus two grades as well. So I would go back to data analysis. I would choose descriptive statistics. Notice it's still on A, so I just need to choose B. Again, I'm still going to choose labels in the first row. And now I need to tell it to put the output somewhere else. So let's put it here on F. And again, only summary statistics needs to be clicked. And then again, I get the same values as before, or excuse me, the same statistics as before, obviously different values because I'm dealing with a different data set. Now I want to take us through how to find just certain statistics. So if I don't need all of the summary statistics, now I want to do one thing here before I find just the average. I want to show you how you can make a mistake using this data analysis tool. So let's say I have this data and I want to find the mean, but instead of finding just the mean, I'm finding all of the descriptive statistics. Notice column A is chosen. I'm choosing to put it in C1 and I click OK. So this looks similar to our output that we had before, but I want to draw attention to the top. Notice it says five. So 
what do you think I maybe did wrong? Well, remember when I just created those um, descriptive statistics for my last example? I chose the option to that there were data labels in the first column or in the first row. As I can see in this, these values, I don't have a label up here. So what I should have done if I wanted to use that data analysis tool is again choose uncheck labels in the first row and then click OK. So now I can see it just says column one and it has changed those values accordingly. But let's go ahead and make sure that we agree. So what I want is now just the mean, which is this value. So if I want to find just the mean, I'm going to choose equals. Remember equals tells Excel we're dealing with a function and the function for mean is average and I can either choose just those cells or I can choose the entire column. Either way it's going to give me the correct mean which matches the mean for my summary statistics. If you need to find the mean, but instead of a regular mean, which means instead of just a column of data, you have data that is weighted, such as a grade that is weighted 40% for tests, 20% for homework, etc., you can choose a different option. So instead of using average, we're going to find the sum product. And so for instance, I'm going to find a weighted numerator numerator and then the weighted denominator and then the weighted average. And so I can use Excel to find this weighted numerator and to do that I'm going to use the sum product button or function and sum product is going to give me the if I choose the first array, which is the scores, and then comma, and then I choose the weights, what it's going to do is it's going to take 83 times 0.4, and 98 times 0.2, and 90 times 0.1, and 87 times 0.3, and it's going to find that weighted numerator. Now, the denominator in this case is just the sum of the weights, now, as you can see, the sum of the weights is going to be 1 or 100 percent, um, but it's not always that way and that's why I included that step. So if you know for sure that the weights add up to 1, you don't need to do anything else except for some product. Um, then the weighted average would of course just be your numerator divided by your denominator, which in this case, again, 87.9. The reason it worked out is because, again, the weights all added up to 1. If they don't, you would have to include those extra steps. If I need to find the median, which is of course the middle value, the first thing I would do if I were doing it by hand is to sort the data, which I've already done for you. So again, I've chosen a small data set just to make it easier for us. If I were to find this by hand, essentially I would count to the inside, count from the outside to the middle and find that middle value, in this case, which is six. Now, if I didn't want to have to do that, of course, I could very easily put equals and then type in median. And again, then I just select my array. So from two to nine, and it finds the value of six for me. Now, why did I give you two samples? Because the first sample, if I were doing this by hand, I could count in and I would count into the fourth value on each side because there are seven total values and seven divided by two is 3.5 and we round up to four. So the fourth value is the middle. If instead I have eight values, so from D2 to D9 is eight values, if I started counting into the middle, I would end up with two middle values. And remember, if you get two middle values, you have to find the average. So eight divided by four I'm sorry, eight divided by two is four, so I would take the fourth and the fifth. And so again, by hand, I would have to remember to average those two values. Using Excel, I don't have to remember anything, I just have to let Excel do all of the work for me. To find the mode in Excel, or the most frequently occurring number, there are actually two functions. So I can either just type mode, 
and find the mode or most frequently occurring number in my array. Or I can choose multi-mode, mode.mult, whoops, that one. And again, what that's going to do is, and notice this one says NA. Now, why does it say NA? Because I can see that I actually don't have any values that occurred more than once. Whereas over here, I have a six that occurred two times, but a seven that occurred three times, which is why the mode was seven. Again, if I use multi-mode, mode.mult, it's going to give me more than one mode if there is in fact more than one mode. So I can see here I've got two twos and I have two sevens. Both are the mode and therefore I've been given both modes. And again here, if I go mode.mult, then I'm going to end up with two, three, four, and five because every value has occurred twice. Now, if instead I would have said equals mode, oops, not mod, mode, notice it's just going to give me the first one. So make sure that if you're not sure if there's one or more than one, that instead you do mode mult or mode single is just the same as mode. We can also use Excel to calculate our variance and our standard deviation, and I'm doing these together because hopefully you understand that these are related. If I take the variance and take the square root, I should get the standard deviation. If I square the standard deviation, I should get the variance. There's also a difference between the sample and the population. So a sample um, uses a slightly different value than the population. So this one is divided by n minus 1 and this one's divided by n. So if I, obviously I need to know the difference between those two. So if I want to find the sample variance, I'm going to write var dot s, again s for sample, and it will find that sample for me. If I want to find the population variance, it's var dot p. Oops. And there's also, I hope you know that, there's always the help function for each one. Um, we're not going to go through that together here. So again, that is the population variance. The standard deviation, again, I don't have to take the square root of the variance. I can just um, write st and again I'm looking for st dev p or s, so this is for sample and then st, oops, make sure you put your equals, st dev and population, and then choose the array. The last thing we want to do is take a look at how do we find the measures of position. Measures of position include minimum, maximum, median, obviously, that we've already learned how to do, and the quartiles. So let's take a look at that and then take a look at how to use those to create box plots. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the minimum. And there is a very easy, obviously, min function. And notice it says returns the smallest um, value in a data set. Now these would be easy uh, because obviously this is an ordered array, but let's go ahead and let Excel do it for us. So the minimum is 32. To find the quartiles, I'm going to use quartile inclusive and then again choose the array. And then I have to choose which quartile I want. So I could have used a quartile of zero instead of minimum here, but for Q1, obviously I'm just going to put one, the first quartile or 25th percentile. And then I can use equals median as I did before, or I could use the second quartile and then I'm going to use quartile inclusive again for the same array and the third quartile. And then again, I could use either maximum or I could use the fourth quartile. So whichever one you want. And again, I'm always using that inclusive value. And then I'm just going to control C and control V. And I want you to notice that when I did paste control V, 
it shifted everything over and that's how Excel works unless you use that handy dandy um, dollar sign to tell Excel to set a specific cell. So this has now given me all of my values. So I could use these to create box plots by hand, but obviously I don't want to do that. I want to let Excel create them for me. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to use these. I'm just, I've made these so we could compare values. I'm going to go to insert. If you don't remember where the box plots are, they're actually hidden here under histogram. But if you don't remember that, you can always go to recommended charts and then go to all charts. And down here is box and whisker. So that's what I'm going to choose. And notice, again, I can change the chart title to calculus grades. Oh, I don't know where all of that came from. Just calculus grades would be just fine. And what else can I do? Well, I would probably want to include an axis title. And so I would specifically probably want that vertical axis because here I would want to put that these are grades. I wouldn't necessarily need anything down here and I'm actually just going to delete that one because I don't know why it's there anyway. Other things I might want to do, obviously I'm going to want a legend so that I know that the first box plot is calculus one and the second box plot is calculus two. And so I'm going to include a legend and you can put that wherever you want it to be, the right. If I put it down at the um, bottom, it actually shows my box plots a little better. The other thing I want to point out is notice there's a, a blank spot from 0 to 30. There's no data there. So if I wanted to, I could always right click on that and format axis, which sorry is off the screen, but it's if you just keep on going down, format axis is down there. And then I could change this to say 30. And really that's just going to give me a better picture of those box plots. Now I want you to notice these values that we did before we made the box plots. So if I'm looking at this box plot, obviously that 60, um, the way box plots work is if you have an outlier, which is what I have here, and notice clicking on that, it gave me that show outlier points. So I definitely want to show the outlier points. But what it does is it then goes to the next value. So 60 is going to be the end of my box plot. Um, but again, if I keep scrolling, notice Q1 here is 63, but up here I've chosen 64. And so what you need to do is make sure you choose inclusive median because the same way we used inclusive up here instead of exclusive, we need to change to inclusive. And now if I hover, I can see that point one is 64, which is Q1, which matches. If I hover over the middle, I get 70, which is the value for 70 I had before for the median. If I hover over here, 76.5, that matches up. <clears throat> and I can see that that's the same. So here again, inclusive. So make sure you're choosing inclusive for both of them. And that's pretty much all you would have to do for a box and whisker plot.